Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. To start us off, my sister Alfin will have the first dance. The way I hear it, people all across the Empire have been awaiting this moment for years. Like me, she is now 17 years old, and this dance will serve as her debut into high society. Her first dance partner shall be... a certain instructor at Thor's Military Academy. None other than the Ashen Chevalier, Reen Schwarzer. Hmm, huh, so then he's the princess's... I hear he's only the son of a baron, but I suppose it's okay these days. He seems to carry himself well. Sure enough. Yeah, there have been rumors going around like wildfire. It's a huge honor, I guess. Yes, he shall be the princess's first. Sounds dirty when you put it that way. Fee? Classy, guys. <laughs> he was drowning in fame before. And now everyone's talking like him and the princess are already married. Yeah, seems like everyone's reading way too much into this. Well, to some degree, yes. <laughs> However will this play out, I wonder? I suppose this is... Truth, I'm actually already acquainted with Mr. Reen Schwarzer. He's the older brother of my dearest friend. Allow me to introduce Elise Schwarzer. She is the student council president at St. Astraya Girls School. Princess? And she will be making her debut into high society alongside me tonight. Reen will choose which of us he dances with. Whoever he chooses, there will be no hard feelings. 
Very well played, princess. Aw, what an adorable workaround. She really is something else. Princess! <laughs> You're a real lifesaver. I will respectfully take both the hand of my sister and her best friend, the princess. It might be a bit unorthodox, but please, allow us Schwarzer siblings to have the first dance. I wonder whose idea this was. My word. Can one man truly be this lucky? <laughs> lucky enough to dodge that bullet, you mean? Yes. Had he danced with the princess first, the whole city would be planning their honeymoon by now. However, since he and his sister danced first, that ship has sailed, as it were. <laughs> oh, Alfin. That... Ashen Chevalier is certainly quite the man, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> you can thank Baron Schwarzer for raising him that way. Hmm. Now, all you young people here with us, follow their lead and enjoy yourselves. The Summer Festival's blue moon shines on us this night. I am certain the spirits are especially riled. So, let us give them a show. My apologies for arriving so late. Ah, uh? Rufus! Ah, so good to see you. Hmm. Is that Governor General Rufus? I didn't know he was coming. <laughs> it seems you've stolen the spotlight all to yourself. To tell the truth, I was at a party held by the Imperial Household Agency. I wish to greet His Highness Oliver, Governor Regnitz, Lord Rogner, and Viscount Arsaid before making my way here. I see. Thank you for your courtesy. The night is yet young, and the party has only just begun. Bring out more food and drinks. Please continue to enjoy yourselves, by all means. You, sis, come with me. Let us catch up, my dear brother. Machias, Elisa, Elliot, and Laura as well. Join us. I'm sure we've much to talk about. In that case, I shall call upon Ms. Valestine and Ms. Herschel. Come, allow me to introduce you to the Empress. What's this about all of a sudden? I don't know, but there's no way we can refuse. Why just us, though? Does it have something to do with our families? Yeah, that's what it looks like. May as well get going then. Um, I suppose I'll go. I wonder what they're talking about. Think we should follow? Yeah. Reen! Oh, 
Oh, Claire! What's wrong? Well, this may come as a surprise, but... A certain someone would like to speak with you. You mean... The someone who just left, perhaps? Understood. I'll be going, everyone. Yes, good luck. Try not to be too nervous! Rain? Instructor? Huh. Serene Schwarzer has arrived. Very good. See him in. I apologize for calling you here like this, Instructor Schwarzer. No, it's an honor to have an audience with the Emperor. Your dances with your sister and Alfin were a sight to behold. Your skills as a lead were just as impressive as the rumors suggested. I'm sure my daughter was very happy. Um, well... <laughs> I'm only joking. You've helped out Oliver numerous times. You've rescued Alfin twice. And you saved Cedric's life at the end of the Civil War. My entire family is grateful for everything you and the rest of Class 7 has done. As the Awakener of the Ashen Knight, the very same one my ancestor once piloted, you have saved many lives and averted many crises. So you knew the truth about Emperor Dreykel's? Yes, indeed. As well as the relationship between the Chancellor and yourself. You know that, too? Yes, I figured it out somewhere along the way. When I asked, the Chancellor didn't deny it. So I took that to mean my suspicions were correct. He and I have much in common. Both of us have lost loved ones to the foolish schemes of others. I've heard about the Chancellor, but your highness? It happened long ago. Have you perhaps heard anything regarding Oliver's birth mother? I may have heard a rumor once. Apparently she was a commoner, but she passed away tragically. I had no idea. 
But are you sure it's all right to tell me all this? It's no great secret. Most of the larger noble families already know. But my point is this. Both the Chancellor and I lost loved ones. But our sons yet live. Certainly a unique point of commonality, wouldn't you say? That's true. Is that why you appointed him as Imperial Chancellor? It's true that I felt an affinity with him. However, the most important factor was his negotiation of the ceasefire with Libero. The events of Hamel wounded my heart deeply. But I knew I could not allow them to be made public. He managed to get both the Four Great Houses and Liberal to concede to his terms and put the Hundred Days' War to an end. And so rose the first common-born Imperial Chancellor. Now I understand. But in the thirteen years since he became Chancellor, a lot has changed. The nobles have lost power, while he's only gotten stronger. And he's using that power to steer Erebonia in a dangerous direction. With all due respect, I don't think it's right to sit back and let him continue. I understand your concern. Oliver's as well. Oliver is more concerned for his brother and sister's futures than anyone. In that respect, he sees the Chancellor as a bigger threat than the nobles do. However, things are not so simple. Regarding myself and the Chancellor, tragedies like Hamel, at times, this nation will make the most tragically foolish decisions. During the War of the Lions, the brothers of the royal family spilled each other's blood and pulled the nation into their feud. The history of Erebonia is smeared with blood and alight with flames, more than any other country. D that's... He's right. Deception is an important tool in politics and war. The thought of killing your own people as an excuse to invade another country. As a teacher of history, I'm sure you have your own thoughts on this matter. So tell me, do you know the people of Erebonia to have a cruel temperament? No. The people of Erebonia are sincere and value honor and pride. They think highly of martial skill, but know it is a virtue to use it only when absolutely necessary. The incidents you spoke of, it's almost as though a devil had been whispering in their ear. <sighs> Precisely. There is something in Erebonia. Something which bends people's minds and steers them toward chaos. Perhaps it could be called a curse. One that has been with us since the founding of this nation. If you've read the Black Records, you may have some idea what I speak of. The, the Black Records? It would seem the Church is seeking them out, but the original writings are in the Imperial family's possession. Only those who succeed the throne are permitted to read them. They are records of the truth of this nation's history, and a prophecy of its future. An inevitable future, no doubt. I'm certain any attempts to avoid it will only cause things to become further warped and twisted. That is one of the reasons I am not putting a stop to the Chancellor's actions. <sighs> sure, I don't know all the details, but... Both the Chancellor and His Highness understand the situation fully, yet they... And so... I plan to not avert my eyes, and watch to the end. Huh? As the ruler of Erebonia, the Empire mired in darkness and founded under a curse, I shall watch my sons, the Crimson Wings, the new light of the nobility, and Class Seven, both old and new, to see if any of them can overcome the iron will of the Chancellor, and light the way to a new path for this nation. <sighs> I promise to give everything I have to find this new path. Not just as a member of Class 7, but on behalf of Thor's Military Academy and all its students and graduates. <laughs> 
You're aware that would include both myself and the Chancellor. Yes? But all the same, well said. Welcome back. I'm not sure what you two spoke about, but I trust it was well worth the time? Yes, most definitely. Precisely. There is something in Erebonia. Something which bends people's minds and steers them toward chaos. Reen. It's nothing. Um, Major, can I ask you something? Finished with your chat? <laughs> your Excellency. It would appear you want no need to speak with me about something. I can't take too much time out of my schedule, but I have a room prepared. Shall we? Huh. <sighs> Yes, let's go. Hmm? Where are you headed, Ash? Eh, I gotta take a piss. Wanna join me? I think I'll pass. But let me say this, don't so much as think about sneaking out. Huh? I admit it's a bit nerve-wracking, but this truly is a special event. We should all enjoy it together as Class 7. Who would have guessed the pretty boy was just as big of a nag as that wild filly? Maybe somewhere along the line, I'll let those guys get to me. Oh, is something the matter, sir? Tch. Oh, yeah, I was just on my way back from the bathroom, but... I noticed something strange. Something strange, sir? Yeah, it's just around the corner here. I believe this will be the first time we've been able to speak one-on-one -on -one like this. Since, of course, that day, 14 years ago. <laughs> His Majesty told me. General Craig, too. So I've heard. His Majesty knows the truth of my circumstances, more or less. Craig and Van Dyke, on the other hand, only know the facts that float on the surface. They remain in the dark as to what truly happened to Brigadier General Gileath Osborne. Then will you tell me? What happened 14 years ago? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave your son? Why did you become a completely different person? You trampled over everything in your way, robbed the people of their pride and independence, and planted the seeds of the Civil War. After what you did to Jirai, you annexed Crossbell and North Ambria, and now you're planning a war with Calvard. At the same time, you're working with the Black Workshop and trying to bring all the darkest parts of the world toward the surface. What are you? No. Why are you doing this? It sounds as though you've figured a great many things out on your own. First, allow me to commend you for not being consumed by your false hero's title. <laughs> Very well. I shall start with your first question. 
After I lost Kasha, I left you in Ymir, and three months later His Majesty bid me investigate the Hamel incident. Afterward, I went to negotiate with the Queen of Liburl. The Queen agonized over the decision, but I knew she wanted peace as soon as possible. Eventually, she agreed to the terms of the ceasefire. The noble officers behind everything, led by Lecter's father, were given the death penalty, and the four great houses were put in check, all in a single month. In recognition of my accomplishment, His Majesty appointed me Chancellor. I'm grateful to Teo. He accepted my request not to reveal anything to you. But at the same time, it meant I had to sever my ties to both you and him. As a revolutionary, taking on the four great houses, I needed to be on my own. I couldn't have anything holding me back. <sighs> so her name was Kasha, the woman who gave birth to me. Once I became Chancellor, I crushed those who opposed me, expanded our railway network, and garnered even more power. Behind the scenes, I also made deals with Ouroboros and joined forces with the Black Workshop. After the incident in Liberal, I cut ties with the snakes and robbed them of the Black Workshop's loyalty. Then, two years ago, I used Rufus to fell the Noble Alliance from within. And ultimately, I stole Ouroboros' Phantasmal Blaze plan right out from under them. What even is the Phantasmal Blaze plan? And what are you planning to do with it? <laughs> By this point, it's safe to say Ouroboros' goal is no different from their gospel plan in Liburl. The acquisition of Adios' treasures, the Septarian. In Crossbell, they used the false phantasm to awaken the blaze in Erebonia. But the prize they seek is more than simply that blaze. This dark land once housed two treasures. The clash between the two of them resulted in the creation of the Great One. All the people, things, and history of Erebonia are inexorably entangled in its blessings and its curse. I'm sure you've been able to deduce that much from certain historical documents you've been reading. What are you? Pardon me, Your Excellency. The Emperor is calling for you. Understood. That shall be all for now. Wait! We're not done yet! There's so much more I need to ask! How did you survive being shot through the heart? Are you the same as the Jaeger King, the Steel Maiden, and Siegfried? Or... Does it have something to do with the scar on my chest and this power I have? Fourteen years ago, when we were attacked, your heart was punctured by debris. Kasha, your mother, she begged me to save you. So, I made the decision. To give my heart to my son. That is the reason Crow Armbra shot to my chest did not find its mark. I'll leave the rest for you to figure out. It's the same riddle I've given to the Ironbloods. Bloods. 
Major, escort him back to the venue. Our gallant hero seems a bit disoriented at the moment. Resin gun that fires gunpowder bullets? Can't be found by metal detectors. Everything falling into place like this is way too convenient. I don't like it. Well, I guess beggars can't be choosers. I know His Excellency isn't a normal person, but I believe somewhere deep down he still cares for you. Huh? Myself, Lecter, Milliam, likely even Rufus as well. His Excellency has personally lent his help to each of us. It's possible he thought of us as a replacement for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try to sort through all this, somehow. Rain! Instructor Rain! I heard His Majesty called you in to speak with him? Chancellor Osborne as well. You spoke with both of them? You're looking a little bit green around the gills there. She's right. What happened? I can't talk about it just yet. All I can say is that nothing is over yet, and something's about to begin. Once this party's over, can we all get together and talk? Yes, of course. I think I can better explain what's going on behind the scenes now. If time permits, I'll tell you all about my circumstances too. Um, we can come too, right? Yeah, we're all on the same boat at this point. You too, Toa. Uh, of course! I'll be there. Hmm, where's Ash? Huh? I don't see him anywhere nearby. Wasn't he talking with you earlier, Kurt? Yes, he said he needed to use the restroom. Though that was some time ago. Is it happening? Lecter! Claire! So that's how the Orphan of Hamel's gonna be used, huh? Claire! Millian! With me! Let's follow them! Oh! Where is everyone headed? Did something happen? Please wait here. I'll go ask. He certainly doesn't change. Ah, uh, but that's what makes him... him. He's a warrior with an iron will, ready to put his life on the line. It's comforting to know such a person is our leader. Well, well. It would appear you're already fitting in as a member of the group. I plan to make this announcement during the Summer Festival. I can't imagine it will be easy. But knowing you, you're already well prepared. You're too kind. <laughs> Part
Pardon the intrusion. You are... Ash Carbide of Thor's Branch Campus, Class 7. The third survivor of Hommel. What have you come here for? Hommel. So it comes back to that yet again. My left eye is aching real bad. Been that way since I was a kid. That scene is burned into it. Even years later, when I was taking care of my mom, I kept hearing the voice. Kill the vile one. Kill the vile one. The Jaegers that attacked the town were slaughtered. You executed all the masterminds. Hamel's name was wiped off the map. You're the one who let this happen, Emperor. Maybe the Queen of Liberal is just as guilty for keeping quiet. Or maybe the other two, for running away and leaving me for dead. Or even that Scarecrow guy, the son of the Mastermind. Hey, tell me. Who do I gotta kill to get rid of all this pain? The curse. Yes, this is the sacrifice from the prophecy. It is only fitting it be me. But don't aim for my heart. That won't do you any good. Aim here. It would be your best chance of killing me. If there is any chance at all. <laughs> Ash, was it? It won't work on him. He's no human. I have my doubts he's even capable of dying. Your Majesty. I don't want this young man's actions to be wasted. Ash. I am the one responsible for Hamel. Let your years of suffering end with me. Why the hell would, would you... Attention! Is he the one responsible? Yes. Unfortunately. I thought we'd captured all the Calvardian agents. Is there a chance he was one of them? A Vern Company gun made with resin parts. It would not have been found by a metal detector. Unfortunately. I cannot deny the possibility.